Hi guys, here we are. Welcome, oh my gosh, it keeps bumping. Anyway, welcome to 2024. It's, wow, almost halfway through the decade. Can you believe it? How I made it out of 2023. Wow. Outside, I feel, look fine. I, I think so. Inside, I feel like Uma Thurman. I, like, when she's driving with Vincent, that's just, oh. That's just how I feel. If my year was bad, at least the amount of books I read was even worse. Because last year I read 50 books, this year I read 20. It's not amazing, it's not great, it's not what I'm used to, which... But like, 20 books... <laughs> I've, maybe it's just because we've all been like taught that like, 50 books is like, the minimum for if you want to be like, a reader but 20 books is actually quite a lot especially if you're like in uni and stuff so i'm trying to like not be too hard on myself but then again i have a friend who's also it, like in the same degree as me and i'm pretty sure she's at 100 books i don't know i'll ask so i thought it would be as like a kind of closing off of the year i thought it would be kind of fun to rank the books i read this year i just wanted to you know kind of do something try something see how it goes so i thought let me tier rank them in very intellectual tiers you know books reading so at the bottom we have toxic gossip train because that happened this year <laughs> i can't I can't believe she put the camera on, took out her ukulele, and was like, I am gonna make history. And, and that's what this what is. is. Then we have Bathtub Slurp, which is very niche. It's very new. You wouldn't get it if you haven't. You wouldn't get it. Okay, you wouldn't get it like me. It's from the new Soul Burn movie, which came out kind of recently now. It's like the scene where, what's his name? Oliver drinks bathtub water i just chose bathtub slurp like it just kind of it really gets the message across to what that <laughs> to what the books in that category how it made me feel then we have that thing haunted me it's horrible i still be sleeping at night i wake up in the middle of the night and i still and i hear so that's tier three. Then we have Ocean Gates, which is... If you don't know what Ocean Gate is, where were you between the months of... When was it even? Like June to August? That thing... Instagram Reels, TikTok, YouTube Shorts. You know it's big when it's like... When YouTube Shorts is like up to date. That's actually insane. No, it was... It was a very sad. Very sad what happened. But wow. Then, of course, top of the tier, biggest moment of 2023, by far, definitely, Barbenheimer. If you were not a part of Barbenheimer, wow, you missed out. You missed out so much. I could not take a walk outside on campus and see somebody in pink or black and not go like, oh, they're gonna go watch Barbie. No, babes, they're just wearing clothes. Anyway, so Bob and Hammer really changed the course of history, I think. Like, they're gonna study in textbooks, they're gonna go like, Mom, they're gonna- <laughs> My child's gonna be like, Dad, what was Bob and Hammer of 2023? And I'll be like, sit down. Sit down, because this is a story, this is something. So, now with the tears in place. Sorry if my camera keeps shaking. It's on my desk, I'm using books as a stand, so it's not the most stable setup ever. Um, but anyway, let's get to it. First on the list, we have my most recent read, aka I finished it less than five hours ago, Name of the Wind. Name of the Wind is a fantasy book. I'm pretty sure everybody should know what it is. It's very, very popular, very good. Well, I guess we'll see if it's very good, but it's very good what other people say. A fantasy book about this guy called Quoth. And he's basically writing his own little memoir, you know, going all Harry spare on the people of the land. You know, like he, they need to know what really happened to him. So he's basically telling this chronicler like the life story, what what's the truth of everything. He is there. <laughs> Actually, this entire book, now that I'm thinking about it, is him just like settling the rumors. Like he's just basically like, here are the rumors. And you best believe they're true. Like, yeah, th that did happen. Yes, I did do that. One thing I must say about it is that it's very, very slow. I'm usually very easily be able whoa, to finish um like a 600 what is this 660 page book in like two weeks this took me a month because halfway through i was like 
damn, we, I'm just at school. I'm literally just at school. That's what I'm doing now. So it was fun. His writing was really good, I must say. His writing, impeccable, impeccable writing. Story though, how about we let things happen for a moment, you know? So I think I'm gonna put Name of the Wind in, I don't know, either, either Ocean Gate or Woo -hoo 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 -hoo. You know what, the ending was really, really good. I really, really, really liked the ending. I'm gonna put it in Ocean Gates. Then we have, this was the first book I read. So starting 2023 off with a mediocre book, let's go. Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. Wow. I forgot I read that. That was, I really forgot about this book, which I think should tell you where this is gonna go. It's really like, just wow, just okay. It's just like meh, you know? I, the only reason I remember I read it was because I put it on, I looked at my story graph and I was like, oh, this book exists. It's basically just like, it's supposed to be like a paranormal dark academia book, but then it's just like, I'm like trying to think about what happened in this book. What is this book about? I can't even tell you the main, I think the main character's name is like Alex or something. It's, I can't remember. I, bathtub slurp. It's going to bathtub slurp. I'm sorry. It wasn't bad. Like I remember enjoying it. I remember I was like, oh, this is pretty like, I want to read the sequel. Never got to the sequel. If I don't even remember what it's about. I just drank it because I could, because I had it. Like that's all. It's Jane Eyre. What need, do I need to say anything more? Like Jane Eyre, Jane Eyre is actually incredible. This was the second book I read in 2023. So thank goodness it, it only went up after Ninth House. Jane Eyre was incredible. Just the entire experience of reading it. I was reading it on the way to um, moving at a uni flat. And on the way there, it was like all misty and rainy. And I was like reading it in the car. It was just the most vibiest of vibes you could ever get. I don't think I'm going to ever experience a reading experience like it again. It was just incredible. The, uh, just that entire book was just so... So good, so good. Like, I actually can't believe that's a real book. Like, that's a real book. Like, Charlotte Bronte, wow. Incredible. If you haven't read it yet, please do. I'm not even gonna tell you what it's about. Like, please just go read it. It's so good, please. Blah, blah, blah. Please go read it. Then we have Fool's Errand. So Fool's Errand is technically the seventh book in a series, but the first in a trilogy. It's by Robin Hobb and it's in her, part of her like Realm of the Elderlings series. There's like trilogies within the series, but they all like lead into each other kind of. This is the second trilogy of a character we knew in the first trilogy. I don't know if I'm making sense. But anyway, this is the first of a new trilogy with a already known character. That's basically all I'm trying to say. This is probably the most first book book I've ever read in my life. Normally when you talk about like a first book in a fantasy series, they're like, oh, it's set up. It's like, oh, okay, you know, we're just getting to know them. But usually there's like still something. You know, there's like a little, uh, Fool's Errand, wow. That was basically just, that was a prologue, basically. The all 400 pages was just prologue, in my opinion. Like, it was just, like, context for the next two books. So, I think I'm gonna put it... The thing is, it was still good. Like, I still enjoyed it. And it's Robin Hobb, so the writing's gonna be good. But... <sighs> You see, I feel bad putting it next to Ninth House because it wasn't on the same level. It was like still ish. I still in, like I still remember things from it, but like I wouldn't say it goes in woo hoo hoo. You know, I'm just gonna put it in bathtub slope for now. Just for now, just then I can I can always change it a bit later. Yeah, I think that's good. Then we have Wuthering Heights. So you best believe when I finished reading Jane Eyre, I was like, I need something more. I need another just. The Bronte sisters knew what they were doing. They knew how to create an atmospheric book. Like, it's insane how they did it. Like, ugh. literally reading Withering Heights, it felt like, I, I think it's in the moors, like, um, foggy, rainy, cold, like, cottage. It's just, book with terrible people, by the way. It's not a cozy read. It's not at all. I'm making it sound like it's like this warm blanket. No horrible people doing horrible things to each other. It's a dark book, which I love. I love dark books. Emily Bronte's prose 
Not as good as Charlotte Bronte's. I think there's a reason why Charlotte Bronte became the most well-known Bronte sister. Um, but Wuthering Heights had really nice prose and just incredible story. Terrible people, again, horror. I can't emphasize enough, like horrible people, but just good characters. Good characters, but horrible people, if that makes sense. So I think I'm gonna put that in, I think I'm gonna put that in woo hoo hoo. It was like very, it's like very, you know, you know, you know, it was, it was. Then we have the next book in the Tawny Man trilogy, which is that Fool's Era, Golden Fool, the second one. This one, you, this is like, this is when I, like, when I started reading it, I was like, the first book was literally just set up, like literally just set up. The way the first book ends, I'm not joking. The conversation literally carries on from the first page in the second book. It, they're basically one book. So I think I read them back to back. Now that I think about it, I don't think whether it, I think I read them back to back or like very, very close to each other. Cause I was like, I need to know what happens cause I don't get enough from the first book. Golden Fool is like, it was also pretty good. Again, I don't really remember that much from it, but I remember it being a lot more like centered. Like it was a lot more in one place than the first book. It took place, I th yeah, in the one town the whole time. And it was basically just like, there was good mystery. I'm gonna say it was, re there was good mystery. Again, like Robin Hobb usually does. Characters are amazing. Sets up really good. This book was, I think I like this book because of the things I expected to happen. Like I really wanted characters to meet, some things to like, to like come, you know, some consequences from the first trilogy to come into this one. Did that happen in this book? A few things I remember. I don't, this entire trilogy is just like one book in my mind because they, it all follows into each other immediately. There's like no time jumps, nothing. So I'm like trying to think, did these things happen in the second book or the third book? Either way, I enjoyed it. It was good. I was like, it made me excited for the third book. I remember that. So I think I'm going to put Golden Fool in... I think I'm going to put it in Woohoo as well, with Withering Heights. I think I'm going to go and put it there. Then we have... Here she is, the Bell Jar. I've never... This was the first time I read the Bell Jar. Obviously, I've heard a lot of things about it. Many, many, many things. Everyone is saying it's good. Did it live up to the hype? Yes, indeed, Lee. Yes, it did. It was really, really good. I loved, loved Sylvia Plant's writing. It was exquisite, if I could say that. I must say the story didn't, I don't remember that much from the story. It was more like the writing and the way she described things. Her writing was just so good. I want to put it in Ocean Gates. Like it really is an incredible book, but it's Sylvia's path writing that I was like, wow, this is, this is really good. Then we have, mm, con <laughs> mm, mm, mm. There we go. Now we have Normal People by Sally Rooney. Probably the most divisive book on this list. You either you either hate it or you love it. I'm gonna say I'm a sucker for Sally Rooney. It's it's going in Ocean Gate. It was a very it was very good. It was very much good. I really enjoyed the relationship between Col Connell and Marianne. Uh I think Marianne's story kind of lost the plot a bit. At a few places, I found her storyline a bit odd at times. Connell was, I, well, Connell is me and I am Connell. Like, way like this. Connell is just such a good, good character. Like I said, I really liked the relationship between the two. The story was really, really good. There were like a few problems, obviously I just mentioned Marianne's story, I think. But overall, it was really, a really, really good book. I understand why people don't like it, but I'm not people, so I, I, I like it. I like it a lot. Then we have, uh, We Have Always Lived in the Castle. Wow, we have always lived in a castle, Barbenheimer. That that book, it gave the same vibes as Wuthering Heights and Jane Eyre. Cold, misty, mysterious. I love, I love mysterious gothic books. They're so good. No, it's Shirley Jackson is just incredible, incredible storyteller and writer. I must say, I wasn't like shocked by the plot twist in We Have Always Lived in the Castle, but it was just, oh my gosh, I actually want to read it again. It's so good. It's so, 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 so good. Short but impactful. A short but impactful book. Now we have Red Rising. Listen, I'm a bit scared to review this one because I read this with a friend and she loves the series. Like I'm talking loves it. And Red Rising, 
It was okay. Much like Ninth House, I don't really remember a lot from it, but I remember enjoying it. <laughs> I remember being like, oh, oh, it's like, like, let him cook, let him cook. But it, I think my biggest problem with it was the writing. It was really, I don't want to sound like demeaning to <laughs> like YA books, but it was a very like much like YA type of writing style. I don't know. It was just like, it wasn't my style. So I think I'm going to put Red Rising in Bathtub Slope. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, uh, it's, it feels like Bathtub Slope. Now we have Atonement. Atonement, this was my least favorite book of the year. It was really just, it was like less than okay, but a bit better than bad. It was like, in the weird, it was like, okay, okay. It was like in the middle of okay and bad. It was just, Bryony is a odd girl. She was just really weird. And it was just, nothing happened. Nothing happened. The ending was good. I'm gonna say the ending was pretty nice. I really liked what he did. I don't know if I enjoyed the ending because I knew it was over or because of the actual story. I'm not sure. But I think it was just okay. Like it was not anything amazing. I don't really see the hype around it. So I think I'm gonna put that in Toxic Gossip Train. It was really just, it's like, wow, that's a book. Okay. Then we have Hamlet. Um, by William Shakespeare. Gonna be completely transparent with you, didn't finish it. I got into the part where it, he was like, doubt thou the stars are fire, doubt thou the sun doth move. Did I read Hamlet because I love Ophelia, the movie? Yes, I did. Did I stop reading it because there was, because it wasn't Ophelia, the movie? Yes, I did. So I think I'm just gonna put in, it feels so weird putting William Shakespeare in Toxic Gossip Train. That is, we really do live in a simulation. This isn't real. Anyway, so then we have Fool's Fate, which was the last book in the Tony Man trilogy. This book was pretty good. It was it was better than the first two. I really liked it. Uh, the ending, I had, I think I did have a few problems with the ending, but it was just, it was pretty, it was really good. Like, the action was really good. I really like how she incorporated the previous trilogy into this one, how that all came together. That's what I'm, ooh. Okay, that, now that I say that, that's what I mean. That's what I want to say. I really, really, really liked how she put it, like how everything came together in the end, how all the books so far, like, built up to this. It was, because this is like the ninth book in the series, so you best believe something should have happened. And she delivered. She, she was like, here you go. And it was really good. I really, really liked it. It was very much enjoyable. So I think I'm going to put it in Ocean Gate. I feel like that's a good place to put it. Yeah, Ocean Gate's... Ocean Gate's pretty good. Then we have, going all the way to number one, Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hobb. This is the first, first book in the Realm of the Elder, oh, ooh, wow, Realm of the Elderlings series. And it follows Fitz since he was like a young, since he's a young boy, I think he's six in the beginning of the book, where his grandfather basically drops him off at his dad's house and he's like, Take your baby. I don't want him. And the royal family takes him in without any questions, basically. They're like, you look like your dad. You look like your daddy. Come with us. Like, well, this old man says he's your son. So he's like, your son. Assassin's Apprentice, rereading it. This is a reread, obviously. Um, rereading it, it was really interesting to see the seed she planted that would like only show itself in like book eight and nine. It was so interesting to see her foreshadowing. Is it as good as the first time I read it? No, because a lot of Fast, the Fastier trilogy, which is this trilogy, um, is like built on mystery. And that's why I loved it so much was because there was so much mystery. I was like, that's why I kept reading. I was like, who, who's this? What's going on? Like what's happening? And rereading it, it's fun to see like where she planted the seeds for those things, but it wasn't as fun because like I already knew what it was. I guess that's just like rereading in general. Like you knew what you know what's gonna happen. So I think I'm gonna put Assassin's Apprentice. It was still an incredible book. Like oh, Fitz is the best character in the world. I love Fitz. I'm gonna put it in Ocean Gate. Um, 
Ooh, now we have My Brilliant Friend. My Brilliant Friend is a book about two friends in Italy, as they kind of, they don't really grow up in this book because it's, again, first book in the series. Uh, I think they're only like 14 at the end of the book. It's basically just their life in, I think it's Naples, Italy, during the 50s. I loved Alana Ferrante. This goes without saying, Alana Ferrante's writing, incredible. I, the way she uses words and the way she writes really does feel like continuous thought process, not thought process, but like a pouring out of like thoughts on page, like as if it was somebody just writing their thoughts down, writing their memories. And talk about like atmospheric writing. Like it felt like I could feel the summer heat. I could feel like the dirty neighborhood. It was like, just so atmospheric. It was so good. I think I'm gonna put it... Uh, does it belong in Barbenheimer though? I think it goes to the top of Ocean Gates. I think I'm gonna go put it there. Oh, can I, yeah. I think it's gonna go to the top of Ocean Gate. It was a really, really good book. I really, really liked it. Next we have Rosemary's Baby. Now, this is probably... If you've ever watched the movie Hereditary, this is Hereditary's like baby daddy. Hereditary is kind of not a carbon copy, but like basically just... Everything that happened in this book added to like 10, you know, like times 10, like just a bit more crazy. But Rosemary's Baby, it was a good book. I really liked it. I really liked the tension. The tension was pretty good. I liked the way he built up this kind of feeling of dread. I loved when Rosemary was, when Rosemary was pregnant was just such a good, it was just so interesting to see her go through this pregnancy and like you can obviously see something is wrong but you don't know what it is. It was a really really good book. I think I'm gonna go put it in, I think I'm gonna go put it in woohoo. Like it was really good but it was also like, you know, like, oh, I'm not gonna really think about it ever again. I um, now we have Norwegian Wood by the man himself, Noruki, Haruki Murakami. Um, favorite author, which I dare not say in public because of the way he just treats female characters is just, and even in, in, even in this book, it's like, bro, bro, no, 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 no. It was just, he's just very objectifying when describing women. Like the first thing, it's like, he first describes the boobs, and then, and then the lady. Norwegian Wood was pretty good. I think it's not as good as Kafka on the Shore, for sure. But it's still a pretty good book. Again, Hiroki Murakami's writing, except at some points, is very good. I really like his style of writing. It's very interesting. I really like it. I don't remember anything from it, though. Like, I, what, was this, what was this book about? Um, I think I'm going to go put it in Woohoo. I think that below Wuthering Heights, though. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's how I'm gonna do it. Final three. Let's do this. Okay. Harry Potter and the Philosoph Philosopher's Stone. Is it embarrassing that I'm reading Harry Potter for the first time at the age of 20? Maybe. Am I happy that I read it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm pretty happy. It's again. It took me. A, it took me a while to get into it because it is made for younger audiences. So I wasn't really drawn to it. Like it was obviously I love the movies. Let me just get that straight. I love the movies, but it's just, I had to get used to the style of writing because it was meant to be read for younger audiences. But the first book was very much YA. It was still really good. Towards like, I think page 150 was when I was like, oh, oh, okay. I see, I see why people eat this up. Like it's actually really good. So I think I'm gonna go put it in, I don't know. I think I'm gonna go put it in woohoo, but like all the way at the top. I think we're gonna, that, that's, that's a good rate, right, rating. Great Gatsby. Controversial opinion, dare I say, Baz Luhrmann's movie, better than the book, better than the book. Great Gatsby, the book is fine. Like it's honestly just a fine book. I don't know, I found it kind of boring, which is opposite of what I found the movie to be. I found the movie to be so exciting, which I think obviously does come from Baz Luhrmann's directing style, but I think the book was just fine. Like, it was just very fine. <laughs> like, it was just okay. So I think I'm gonna go put that in... I think I'm gonna put that in bathtub slurp. <laughs> I think I'm gonna put that in bathtub slurp. <laughs> wow, that's... <laughs> I'm gonna put that in... I'm gonna put Great Gatsby in bathtub slurp. That's gonna be good. Final book on the list. We've come to the end. All the light we cannot see. I read this to watch the TV show by Netflix, which... Netflix, what did you do? I am convinced that they read half the book 
saw that it was like, oh, this is this is a happy ending. Okay. And that's that's why they adapted. Because when we got when I got to episode four and I saw the credits rolling, I was like Yes, and like, where's the rest of it? Like, you're still alive. You're still alive. <laughs> you're still, it was like, huh? But anyway, the book. This is not about the TV show. This is about the book. Is the book good? It's all right. It's good. I liked it. I really liked the character of Mar of Marianne. No, oh, that's normal people. What's this girl's name? Marie Lore. I'm just gonna call her Marie. I really like the character of Marie. I really like the way he wrote her chapters because since she is blind, he has to kind of focus on other senses more, like touch and sound. And one chapter that I read where I was like, this is, wow, was when she was trying to get to her house. Like her dad just left to try, to try and find her own way. And the anxiety that you feel like reading it, it makes you feel like you're blind. His way of writing those chapters were just so good. I really, really liked it. Um, the ending was a bit weird to me. It was like he kind of decided randomly that, oh, this, I want this to happen. But anyway, so I think I'm gonna put all the light we cannot see in Ocean Gate. I think that's a good place to put it. So yeah, that's my final ranking at the top as it should be Jane Eyre. Jane Eyre was definitely my favorite book of the year. That book changed my life. It's what I think about constantly. That's my shower thoughts. It's Jane Eyre. Like, can't get better than Jane Eyre. Thank you so, so much for watching. I hope you, I hope everybody has an incredible 2024 and I hope everybody had a good Christmas. See you again. Bye.